Today we are getting schooled on how to go about drinking our greens, most specifically green, green wheatgrass. Our friend Carrie Rush, who's locally known as the Fresh Wheatgrass Girl, she's gonna join us and talk about all of the wonderful benefits to wheatgrass. It's also a very easy and inexpensive thing to grow. So she's gonna show us how to all get started growing it at home, as well as what all is involved with juicing this superfood. She's even gonna show us some tasty recipes, as well as a few tips on how to get your kids to drink it up. A shot of cheers to the liquid sunshine today on Be Organic. I'm Michelle Beshin, and I love sharing ideas, especially ideas that celebrate nature, resourcefulness, and doing things yourself. I also love to search out interesting people, everyday people that are doing up green in their own unique way so that we can throw their naturally good ideas into the mix. I'm on the same journey as all of you, trying to do things that are healthy and vibrant for us and our environment. Be Organic is a lifestyle. It's my lifestyle, one that is naturally imperfect yet practically green every step of the way. We have my friend Carrie here now, who is responsible for getting me addicted to wheatgrass recently, which is a good addiction, by the way, and she has a lot of fun information to share. And first off, why don't you tell everybody kind of how you became an expert in wheatgrass and juicing and all of that? Okay. Well, I don't know if I'm necessarily an expert, but I'm a specialist in something that I'm passionate about and I like it a lot. Um, it started out 13 years ago. My mom was diagnosed with stage four colon and liver cancer. It was in her lymph nodes and throughout her body. And um, we wanted to try alternative things to kind of heal her and, and make her better. Mm -hmm. And um, along with, she did do traditional medicine, chemotherapy and radiation, but to build her immune system back up and to, to build her back up, we tried different things. We tried juices and smoothies. And um, I had a friend in California he sent me some wheat berries and said, you really should check this out, you know, you know. And so we started researching it and looking it up online and reading books and um, growing it and juicing it for my mm -hmm. mom, making her drink it in the mornings. She's alive now and she's healthy and she, she doesn't have any cancer anymore and the and doctors can't believe it. a lot of this, of, of what you guys did to, to that. Yes, it's high concentration of nutrition and enzymes and live vitamins, chlorophyll. I mean, it's, it's a live nutrient. It's more power packed. You'd only have to drink an ounce of it where if you were going to do a big juice, you would drink, you'd have to drink a, a gallon of it compared to an ounce. So it's just easier. And you're going to share with us just a lot of the different ways you can use the wheatgrass as well as some tips on how to grow it yourself, because it really is a relatively easy thing to grow yourself and an easy habit to get into really at home for everybody. Yes. Okay. Start with some seeds, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Now, there's, um, there's about 7,000 different varieties of wheat berries that you could use because this is actually the wheat that is ground for bread. And so there's, there's, you know, there's spelt, there's barley, there's rye, there's different kinds of berries that you could sprout, but they all taste differently and you, you get it from lots of different locations. And ours that we grow right now, the variety that we have, we've found is very sweet and people think we've added something to it, but it's all just in the seed. Everything that you need is in the seed, the nutrients in the seed. Now, sometimes you can go, um, you know, you can go to your local health food store and get wheat berries. I've seen them on the shelf at grocery stores too, because people do grind them mm -hmm. for bread. So it, they are available. You can call some seed stores to okay. farm, direct farm mm -hmm. seeds for the red hard winter wheat berries. That's what we sprout. There's um, white winter wheat, but we like the red hard winter wheat, that variety. There's different varieties of that. There's Arapaho, there's a lot of different names that you can find. But um, most of the farmers will think you're kind of crazy if you tell them what you're doing with it. I've already been through all that too. So they grow it for, um, they grow it in their fields, you know, for like grass fed beef, that kind of a thing. Okay. And it's for erosion control. And so when I tell them that I'm juicing it and, and drinking it, and serving it, then, it to people, <laughs> then it, I get the crazy eye look from them a lot. But so you can try that different things. I'm, um, we've we've already done that. But um, if it's sitting on the shelf too long, sometimes in the barrels or the bins at the health food markets or in the grocery stores, they'll have it because you can grind it for wheat mm -hmm. bread. Um, just make just try it. Just try it and sprout it. All it doesn't take very much. Um, 
to do like a little test with it? It doesn't. No, you just put it in some water and overnight and then the next day let it strain off. You can put it in a sprout bag or a, a colander and do it that way, but just see how it sprouts. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's, it's fun to grow, it's easy to grow, and it's very affordable. It's really, it, the seeds are relatively inexpensive to buy, so it's really a fun thing to get started at home. Why don't you kind of walk us through the process and show us some of the tips on how to successfully grow it at home. To do a flat of this size, and, and this is a 10 by 20 garden flat, um, it takes about a cup and a half or three quarters of a pound of seed. Okay. So you start with the dry seed, and then you just cover it with water and let it soak for at least eight hours, but we like to do it overnight. Does it matter? Does the water need to be room temperature, kind of warm, or does it? It doesn't really matter. We do use filtered water when we, when we, use, when we sprout ours. Okay. Then you're ready to strain it the next day. Okay. I have some here that we've had soaking. And you can either use a strainer or okay. you can use um, a mesh bag, a sprout bag too. Okay, so you just strain it off after it's um, sat overnight. And you can let it sit in the colander if you'd like, or you can use a sprout bag. And it'll sprout like that for another, another day, okay. another night. What'll happen is this, is this is a bowl here that's already sprouted, and you'll see the little, little tails that have kind of popped out. Okay, and that's the, when it's ready to plant. It's ready to plant. So that's when you want to spread it over the top of, of your dirt. And you don't want to have any of the dirt showing. You want to cover it completely with the seed. And about how much dirt do we have in here? Just like maybe an inch? Mm, about an inch. And then is this a, is a special type of like a potting? It's an organic dirt. It's very light and um, it has, it can either be mixed with perlite or vermiculite okay. um, to make it really n nice and fluffy and light and it can drain easy then. So then you just spread it over the top of the, of the dirt like this. Now, when I first started planting my first, my actual first attempt at wheatgrass, I sprinkled just a little bit like you would for flowers. And I thought, well, <laughs> got three why, did I, why didn't I get a full flat of grass? Well, that's why. <laughs> you have to really so load it up. You have to load it up. And then it'll go through another uh, germinating process. So um, you want to keep it kind of moist. Okay. And... Now, is it, can you plant in really any type of container? Can I plant in like, let's say a terracotta pot that has, a, that's deeper? Yes, yes you can. And if you plant, the deeper the dirt, the longer the roots go. And so you can actually, um, you could get another clipping off of it if you wanted to. Um, we just like the small amount of dirt because the, the taste will change a little bit if you, if you juice the regrowth. Okay. And then what you do is you just kind of keep it nice and moist and you can cover it with a damp towel because this is the germinating stage here. And you know, when we're doing it, we're doing t more than one flat at a time and you might too after you get addicted to it. So you'll want to do... You have to have a lot of flats going. <laughs> you go through it you can, a lot more than you think you would, you know. You can stack flats on top of flats. Then. Okay. So if you start one, just do another one because this is where you just want to keep it warm. It doesn't have to be in the sunlight right now, just warm and moist. Okay. And this will take about three days, two to three days. And then we're to this And then we get to this stage when you see the, sp the little sprouts starting to shoot up. And so that's when you take the cover off and you can let it have sunlight. And this is at the harvesting stage right now. And you can tell by finding a blade that's jointed off. And let me see if I can find one in here. That's when the blade splits apart right here. You see the two, oh, okay. the two blades mm -hmm. coming out? That's called the jointing stage. The grass right now is at its peak nutrition. This is when it's the sweetest and when it has the most chlorophyll in it. So it's the and best And then time. how about how long, I mean, do you have, cause this is gonna continue to grow how long can you, you know, to use it? You don't have very long, just a couple of days. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. Because once it starts to, it'll start to die off again, actually, it thinks it's going back to seed, so it'll start to lay down. It'll be um, really long, and the tips could be brown, they could be yellow, and at that time, you don't want to drink that. Okay. That's when people might taste wheatgrass some places and say, I don't Ew. like it, that didn't taste very good, and that's the reason why they have old grass. So if that starts to happen and your flat's only half gone, mm -hmm. um, 
which won't really happen. Once you start juicing it, you'll go through this relatively quickly because you'll get about seven to 10 ounces out of this whole flat. So if you're only drinking one ounce a day, even maybe two, it's not gonna last you five, seven days. So, um, but if that does start to happen, you don't think you're gonna get through it, cut it all and put it in a bag and put it in the fridge. Oh, okay. And like you said, I think people will be surprised at actually how quickly you do go through a flat, especially after you show us all that's involved with juicing and some of the different ways to juice, to use the juice, which is what we're ready to do now. Yes, so great. we're gonna clean things up here and. Sing your house song. Someday you will find somebody who will sing along and stare at the moon. Sing your house song. Someday you will find somebody who will sing along Well, I have a dance retail store and Carrie has been one of my customers and so I've been having some health problems and so she suggested uh, wheatgrass. I knew nothing about it and it was because of my poor diet and lack of interest that I had some colon issues. And so with her encouragement, as far as uh, I came in, we, my wife and I both started uh, as far as using wheatgrass and, and natural products. And so we did that consistently. And after three years, uh, all my colon problems as far as went away. And uh, the doctors never asked why, but they said, do whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Well, you've taught us the proper way to grow the stuff. Now you need to show us some of the fun ways that we can use it. Okay. Well, first of all, you have to juice it. The only way to get the juice from wheatgrass is you have to use a masticating juicer. It's yeah. completely different from a centrifuge juicer. And there's some different options for people for this type of juicer. And the great thing is they're not just for wheatgrass. You can juice other things in them as well, right? Right. They're complete nutrition centers. They're not just for wheatgrass. They do the best with green leafy vegetables, but they'll also do every other fruit and vegetable as well. And you can also run nuts through them to make nut butter. Okay. Um, a lot of the machines have different um, nozzles on the end, so you can run your own um, like wheat pasta or something through and make your own noodles. Okay, so like you said, it's a nutrition center and you have, looks like a few different kinds here. Why don't you kind of talk about the different ones that you've brought with you? Okay, sure. Well, you have the manual version here which it looks a lot like a sausage grinder. It's what it was modeled after. And um, this, this is- This is kind of what you started with, isn't it? It is, mine was an old cast iron one that was really um, heavy and not very balanced very well. This is balanced really well. I mean, we've used this at the farmer's market before, even when our electric one has gone down for some reason to do shots. And so um, it's, it doesn't take that much, you know, it's just all man or woman powered and uh, Put, it'll do every fruit and vegetable too. The pulp comes out here and the juice comes out the spout down okay. here. Okay. Now, um, this is a newer model of a masticating juicer and this is called a vertical masticating juicer. And what it has that's a little bit different is it has a really big auger. You know, this one has a, it's a small auger and I could take that apart and show that to you if you'd like, but um, this has a bigger auger and it uses gravity to juice, you just drop everything in. The pulp will come out one side and the juice will come out one side here. And it's a little bit faster than that model and the shoot's a little bit bigger so your pieces of fruit and vegetable can be just a little bit bigger. Okay. So, but this one is really pretty, the most common one. I mean, this is getting more popular. It's, it's brand new, so. Um, and people like fast. People like I'm them sure. when they're a little bit faster. Now this is the part here that has the different nozzles. This is the one that you use for wheatgrass or for juicing. Um, we have different ones here for, you know, like if you wanted to do noodles. Okay, well let's juice. All right. So we like to use a knife. You can use a, a pair of scissors to cut and you cut down as close to the root as you, as you possibly can because you'll get more juice that way. Um, sometimes, People, you will get a little bit of mold or bread mold on some of these seeds, oh, the wheat yep, berries. Oh, I see it right there. So you cut above that. You cut above that. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just bread mold. There's another mold that will happen sometimes, and it's a white spider, like cotton web mold that might go up the shoots or the shafts of the grass. You don't want to juice that grass. Okay. 
That's another thing. It's not a good mold. <laughs> no, that's not a good mold. You don't want to juice that. So just cut above that and you're ready to go. So then we'll just juice a handful. Are you ready? Okay, do a handful at a time. Okay. Okay, that should give us enough juice here okay. now. Look how green that is. I know. <laughs> and this is about the typical size that you want to Yes, one to two take. ounces. And then what, talk a little bit about the shelf life. I mean, after we juice this, then can I put this in the fridge? No, no, you really need to drink it as soon as possible after you've juiced it because we've just released the enzymes and the nutrients and it's fresh and it's still alive. Um, once it starts to sit, it'll start, it's starting to die. Do you recommend people take this once a day, twice a day? Can you have too much of it? You can't have too much. You cannot overdose on chlorophyll and wheatgrass. I mean, a healthy person will be able to absorb two ounces of the nutrients into their system and that's good for them for the whole day. Okay. You know, we call it liquid energy. Um, you know, it's, it's nature's energy. And we always say it's the best shot you're ever gonna have. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not like caffeine. It, it's a, it's a feel-good. It's like liquid vitamin. It's uh, a clean energy. It's a clean a really feeling. clean energy. That's how I kind of describe it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then we just drink it, right? Yeah. Now you can do Cheers. it with an orange slice afterwards. I do like buy. the orange slice with mine. I'll have to admit. John, my husband, he doesn't need the, and he doesn't really, he's not a green guy, but uh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't like the orange slice with his. It's good either way. Cheers. Cheers to your health. <laughs> yep, that's right, every day. Mm. It really is, it's very sweet. And it, you know, to, to try to describe it to people, it it's, tastes like grass but it just has a sweet, a sweetness to it. It does. Now people ask me that all the time. What's it taste like? And I have a, a few different things that I say. It, I think it tastes like, almost like a green sugar snap pea. Like if you're standing in the garden and you just put the, the pea in your mouth, because mm -hmm. they never make it into our house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we just stand there and eat them. So it's, it's very sweet like mm -hmm. that. And then there's other ways to use the juice as well, um, mixing it and making some lemonades. And you're going to share a couple of your recipes with us. Yes, yes. I hid wheatgrass juice in my daughter's smoothies for a while, and she likes them with blueberries and apple juice. Now she knows that it's there, but, so she'll drink it that way. <laughs> That's how you can get your kids That's to how get it. Maddie's kind of, mm, not, I'm not really a fan. So this, if I mix it with the juices, that's a brilliant way to be able to let her benefit from it as well. Right, right. Think about two to three pounds worth of vegetables mixed into a fruit smoothie, mm -hmm. and it's a good way to get them to get the vegetables down. Um, the other the other way to do it is with uh, lemonade, and that's really popular, like a green lemonade is what okay. we call it. And um, I can make those for you too. Great. I'm gonna start off with them. Um, I've already juiced some lemons okay. and a little bit of water and some agave nectar. And you have the recipes for that. So we'll just put And the... we can do citrus in here by just taking the peel off of it. Right. Correct? Right. And then um, I like to put just a little bit of pineapple in it too. Okay. That's all right. I make a mess all the time. Okay. <laughs> and I'll just put a little bit, of, put a shot in. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how you disguised that green color in any kind of smoothie. <laughs> well, you don't disguise it in the in the lemonade. You just make it green lemonade, and it's um, it's kind of fun. And I think it's a little more fun that way. Mm-hmm. And everyone likes that. Well, that's a pretty color. Mm-hmm. The colors are really important. It's good to get all different colors into your diet. The more colorful it is, the more the healthier it is, right? Right. So there's the green lemonade. Mm, that smells really good. I'm going to try a little bit of that. And then you also um, said that you make that into popsicles. Which right. Which is a, another fun way for kids to... It is. Mm, that's really good. You like can barely that. taste the wheatgrass in it. No, the um, citrus really helps with that. And you can put a little bit of lime and lemon in with it too. 
I'm gonna whip up another one here. Yeah, I'll make the blueberry apple okay. juice one. This is the one your daughter likes? Yeah, and so you can't tell that there's anything green in when you do this one. The blueberries hide that. So it's probably about a half a cup or so. I don't really use recipes. If you knew me, I just kind of eyeball it. And you really can't go wrong with fruits and vegetables. You can't, you can always fix it. And I already went ahead and, and pre-juiced some apple juice too, okay. so. And we do have all the recipes online at beorganic.net, so it makes it very easy for people to, if they want to experiment with some of the different things. Okay, and we'll just give it a little bit. Of, oh, there's my wheatgrass right here. This is a handy little blender. Yeah, I like this. Personal blender. Okay. Ooh, that one's pretty too. All the colors. Like that. Hmm. Wanna try a little of this one too? Yeah. And it's really easy to take these mixtures then and then just put them into a popsicle form. Oh, that one's good too. Mm -hmm. Those would be the healthiest popsicles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I started making the popsicles because um, I had some people that were going through chemotherapy and radiation and they get ulcers in their mouth and usually they tell them to suck on ice cubes and they did with my mom too. Um, so why not make a healthy mm -hmm. ice cube, a healthy popsicle? And because wheatgrass is so healing, I mean, think of it like aloe vera and things like that that you put on for a burn. If you put out, you put aloe vera or um, wheatgrass in your mouth, it heals. So it actually healed the ulcers in their mouth. It was really successful. And and then it's a good way for for people that may not like the taste of it or someone that may not may have to get used to the taste mm -hmm. of wheatgrass. It's a good way to integrate it into their lifestyle so they can get it in somehow. Well, I really appreciate you introducing me and my family to wheatgrass and sharing all of your wonderful knowledge and expertise because, you know, like I said, personally, I can attest to it. It really does make you feel better and I can see, you know, how we can all benefit from, you know, incorporating it into our daily nutritional routine that we all have. We have all of the wonderful recipes that she shared with us online at beorganic.net as well as more information about Carrie and all of the wonderful things that you're doing over at Fresh. So keep up the, the great work. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs>I got into wheatgrass, I've been a vegetarian for about five years and before that I was kind of toying with the idea and wheatgrass is just one of the many things that I heard was just a good way to get protein um, if you're not, especially if you're not eating meat. So I started um, going to different places and trying it. Yeah, I'm not 100% like raw or anything like that but wheatgrass is definitely my, my healthiest point of my day I think. And I've noticed a big difference in myself just skin wise, um, my skin is healthier. Uh, I don't get sick as much, my allergies aren't as bad. That could be just moving from California to Des Moines, I don't know. For me, yeah, I mean, I can definitely tell. You know, my, my skin gets better, you know, I just feel more energized. I mean, for me, it wasn't that good of a difference at first because, you know, I've always been eating healthy, but still it makes a difference. You know, I definitely feel it if I have it on a regular basis.